Hello. Yes, I think I fixed it. Do 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 do. I think I fixed it. And hello. I think I may have fixed it. I think I may have fixed it. For some reason, the setting was wonky. You still can't hear anything. Turn your turn your volume up. Oh, okay. So what's going on? I don't know what's going on. It should work. I picked it. Is it working? Hello. I hear you. Hey. I have no idea what's going on. Hey, there we go. I, I selected this microphone that I have here and uh, it didn't work. So there we go. Yet again, second time I've done a uh, live stream and we've had to do it twice. <laughs> yeah, great. You can tell I'm an expert at this, can't you? Hey, <laughs> Not too quiet. Good. Excellent. Right, we'll just wait for a few other people who got totally confused by me having two uh, live streams up. Glenn never has this issue. Yeah, thanks very much, you. <laughs> we'll give people a few minutes to come back. Um, if you want to, um, any topics or anything like that you want to chat about, I've got a few notes of a few things that I thought would be quite interested to talk about. Brexit, yeah, it's Brexit. Don't talk about the value of the pound. Yeah. The Quattro, yeah, uh, about that. Where is it? Where is the Quattro? Ugh. Restoring this, yes. As you can see, I haven't got very far with it. <laughs> I bought it. The, the chassis is actually in lovely condition, but uh, someone painted it with car paint, and it's all fallen off. And then on top of that, they painted it again with car paint. So it's got two layers of car paint on it, um, but the car is actually lovely. But, uh, yeah. I need to sort that out, but I need to strip all this off and put it all back on again. And But I've got everything I need, all the uh, bumpers and the lights and everything. So, yeah, I will do. I have got new rims, but these are glued on. So I have to use the old acetone trick to get these tires off. Oh, that's right. We've got quite a few people turned up now. Just trying to catch up on a few of you, you know. Uh, dot, dot, dot for Blake for big fluid. Yeah, it probably eat the body though. That's the only problem. Uh, what have we got? Lancia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us more about the escort body you did. Yeah, well, um, that body was actually made by LNL Models. Uh, he sent me two. I've got a Mark One, which was the one you saw, and then uh, I did a Mark Two. Uh, well, I haven't done a Mark Two. I've still got it sitting upstairs. Um, you can fit them onto anybody, uh, 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 any chassis, sorry, like a TTO2 um, or anything like that. The quality wise, nothing wrong with them. They're great. Um, so I can highly recommend them. Uh, they do loads. He does escorts and loads of old cars like that. So, uh, yeah, I can definitely recommend them. And they're not as expensive as you think either. So this is from Dan. Gavin, I've just refurbished my original boomerang. Should I keep it or sell it on? Uh, good question. Good car. Very good car. Takes a lot of power. You can actually run brushless in a boomerang, believe it or not, and they handle it really well. Would I sell it? No, not yet. Um, if you, I would hold on a little bit longer. Um, they're only going to go up in value now because the repo uh, reproduction ones, they're all disappearing like crazy. So uh, I would probably hold on to it. Where's mine? Where's mine? There it is. So this was the first car I restored on the channel. I bought this. This is an original. And uh, yeah, it, this one needed a lot of, lot of work to restore it. But uh, great car, really easy to work on. And uh, I'm a big fan of it. But, yeah, I've seen people run brushless in these things, and they fly, absolutely fly. Um, depends what you wanted to buy instead of this. Maybe you want to go a little bit more special, something like uh, – oh, they're all stuck together. Maybe you want to go for something like this. 
Now that's pretty cool. I didn't build this one. I bought it like this. Now they're, they're quite rare. They only came out for a very short period of time. So uh, I love it. Absolutely love that. Uh, but I hate aerials. Not a big fan of aerials. It really messes with my wool. <laughs> yeah, the vintage cars, Hoot. Yeah, they're lovely looking. Uh, fast. Some can be fast. Yeah. But you wouldn't want to crash one because they'll just implode. Have I got a hot shot, Craig? Yes, I have got a hot shot. Uh, where are you? Where's my hot shot? Here it is. Uh, there you go. This is an unrestored original, um, fully driving. It's kind of, it's pretty good condition, really. But um, I have got all the parts to restore it back to mint. But I drive this one, believe it or not. So uh, I don't really want to restore it because if I restore it, then uh, I won't drive it anymore. So it kind of sits. It's got some weird kind of corrosion going on here and stuff. But uh, the rest of the car is fine. Um, it did break on me once, but I managed to fix it. Um, it's got a torque tune motor in it. And that's fine. It's fast enough. But at some point I will restore it. Yeah. I've also got a big wig. This is a vintage big wig. I haven't, uh, I haven't restored this one yet either. I've got all the parts and a new body sitting upstairs to restore this one. Um, but it's in pretty good condition itself. This is a runner as well. All the original electronics in it. Um, but again, haven't restored it yet. But it's still in quite nice condition, really. I put new wheels and tires on it. But apart from that, the body's a little bit tatty. But I could fix that quite easily. So it's not like I'll get rid of this body. But yeah, big wig. Oh, put some movie. These aerials drive me crazy. They don't work on the, the cool wall. Where does this one go? Down here. So what else have we got? Two else. Boomerang was my first RC car. Riri again. Uh, well, well, yeah, we're talking about Riri's from Tamiya. Um, Tamiya cars coming out. So this is a good one because you can all take a bit of a guess of what you think Tamiya are going to produce. I mean, there's no way I would have guessed that that's come out this year. But going by that this came out this year, I'm going to take a punt at my guess would be they're going to release – the Thundershot, maybe? The Thundershot? This could be reread. Being that they just brought this out, it wouldn't be that difficult to do this. So maybe we'll see this. Uh, uh, what else? Could see a Fire Dragon instead. Being that it's the same chassis, it would be very easy for them to do that. Uh, but the Fire Dragon is probably not as popular or pretty looking as that is. So I would, my gut would go, I think that will come out. Uh, what else? Well, we're definitely going to see a TC01 um, touring car, I would have thought. Touring car body on the TC01. Um, my car is actually fixed now. It's all working again. Uh, no body, obviously. But uh, I fixed it. I changed out the drive shafts. I got rid of the dog bones um, that caused the problem in the first place. Uh, I will do some upgrades to this, but I want to do another speed run with it, but he needs a body on it at some point. But the car's fully fixed, uh, replaced all the bits and pieces that were damaged. So that will be coming soon. But the actual chassis didn't get damaged at all, really. I was quite impressed with that. Uh some other cars. Now, another prediction. I think Tamiya is going to release a Hot Shot 2. That's my guess. I reckon Hot Shot 2, or I would wish and I hope possibly we could see a King Cab, maybe, but that's just purely guessing. But going by the, um, the Hot Shot 2 would be a good one to bring out. So I was looking at the uh, Tamiya 100 and I thought, yeah, the Hot Shot 2 could be a good release. 
uh, how is uh, how's it going with the Patreon, Craig? Yeah, it's doing OK. Um, it all helps, believe it or not. Um, being such a small channel, YouTube uh, doesn't pay much at all, um, especially for the when you work it out per hour. So the guys that support me over at Patreon, it helps loads. Um, believe it or not, um, this channel makes £300 a month. Uh, and that's putting out three videos a week, every week. And each video takes from a day to three days. So uh, you yeah, work that out. But I don't do it for the money. I do it because it's great fun and uh, to be my own boss and to play with all these cool toys. But at the end of the day, if you're only making £300 a month as a job, uh, you don't do it for very long. Luckily, my wife puts up with me. I don't know if she's around. No, she's not around. <laughs> So, uh, but it's it's going okay, um, you know, but we keep going. So if you'd like to support the channel, head over to Patreon. It would be fantastic. Now, the problem with Patreon is they take a big cut out of it, which is, I, I don't really like that. Um, also, if, if, you, if you set a monthly tariff below five pound, they take a much higher percentage because they, they get charged for the card fees and the transaction fees. So if I was to set up a Patreon at like three pound, which I'd like to do, I would only see a pound of it. And then you guys lose like two quid of it. So it, it doesn't really work like that. The only other way that I thought is to have it that people can just do like a pound PayPal or something like that. Um, because obviously a, a five pound or 10 pound a month, it's a big commitment for people. But anyway, there we go. Uh, Darth959, yes, please. Uh, oh, aerial problems again. Tammy, I need to release this. Why they don't release it, I'll never know. Even if they did it, I, I, I can't have thought, why don't they release a collector's edition? So it kind of that gets them out of fixing all the fundamental problems with it. Just do a collector's edition, exactly as it is, knowing how fragile this car is. They could even not do it with the livery, and it could just be completely white across the top and blue with the stripes, but none of that. We, you know, we can do all this ourselves. It's just the chassis is fantastic, um, but I'd love to drive this car, but I can't drive it because if I break it, the parts are insanely expensive and really hard to get hold of. Um, I've now, since this has last been on the channel, these are all alloy wheels I've fitted and uh, I've had the drivers professionally painted. Um, so it's looking lovely. So I'm really happy with it. It's one of my favorite cars. Um, I need to sort the suspension out a little bit. I need to make it shorter, but all the cars do that. But just because it sits on the shelf, it should look a bit more like that, I think. But yes, a lot of people ask about this and a lot of people want this car. Um, so, yeah, I think they'll I think they will buckle in the end. But obviously it may not come with any livery whatsoever. But they've done it. They've done it before. They do the other cars. They've done. Um, they did. They re-released this. They re-released that again. And uh, it was completely white. So there's no reason why if they did that in a, just a white Formula One car, there's no reason they can't do that either. Um, so, you know, who knows? Ugh. So what about some other companies? Let's talk about Koyosho. What do you reckon? Well, of course, you're pretty easy to follow their releases. So I, I am desperate for them to bring out the mids. But I don't think we're going to see the mids yet. I think we're going to see a salute being blue. There's two. There's a blue and a red one. Don't ask me what the difference is. I have no idea. Um, so that will come out first. And then the Optima Pro four-wheel drive. Now, that's a car I think is the best looking of all of them. Um, I love the body. It's really sleek. So I think it will be one of those first. And then it will be uh, this, which is the mid. It doesn't look like this. It, this is all stickers that don't belong on it, but it should be white. So I think we've got a way to go. Uh, I would probably predict 22 a year to bring out two buggies and then another one. So two years. Uh, sorry. Uh, 22 so another yeah a year and a half two years maybe uh what else have we got there's a lot of you chatting in here uh do 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 would you like to do a tell me a factory to whoa well yeah uh, i could tell you about that i used to work for a japanese company 
And I've been to Japan about 11 times. And uh, purely by chance, it was a company that's based in Hamamatsu City. So I used to get the Shinkansen down from Tokyo to Hamamatsu City. Well, it turns out that the Tamiya factory is like one stop on. And I never knew. So uh, I could have gone there easily, like 10 times. But uh, so at some point, because uh, my wife's never been to Tokyo, I used to go on business all the time. So at some point, we all go to Tokyo, probably when we go on our way to Australia or something. Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'd like to go go uh, visit. It'd be really cool. There's a couple of really good videos of the uh, shop tour. The only problem is uh, I'll go there and there's a shop. And that's fatal because I'll come back with like two suitcases full of kits and uh, they're quite large. So <laughs> I don't know what I would do. Uh, what about the uh, Mar Dave Cobra? Yeah, well, um, I contacted them because I really wanted to get because they're a small company. I don't know if you know about Mar Dave, but Mar Dave is a small English company that make uh, RC cars. They're uh, real reasonable price cars, and some of them are really good. Well, they're bringing out one called a Cobra e uh, Evo, I think it's called. Uh, Cobra Mid Evo two-wheel drive. So I thought, yeah, I'll get in contact with them before they release it, and I'll get one on the show, and hopefully I could drum up a bit of, uh, bit of excitement about it and a bit of buzz about it and things like that, and, and for people to, to know about it, because not many people – know about Mar Dave. Well, a lot of people in the UK maybe, but not around the world. And they didn't have one free, um, free. They didn't have one available. So I said to them, oh, well, can I get one? And they said, well, when they're released, you can you can get one. So I uh, left it at that. And then when it got to the release date, I sent him an email saying, can I place an order for one? And he said, uh, yeah, sure. And I said, well, do you want to deposit? And that's all I heard back from it. So I went on the website and they're sold out. But really, I should just phone them up. Um, but most of the time, I've just talked to them on uh, email. But uh, I'm happy to pay for it. I just want it now. The problem with um, with the channel is I need to bring it, uh, make content quickly. I need to get it when it's current or when it, before it comes out so that the videos are released as it's available. So this is something that a lot of us small YouTube channels, RC channels like us, we don't get any special treatment. It's not like Tamiya phone me up and say, Gavin, we're going to release this car early. Do you want it? We get none of that. There's no special treatment for any of the manufacturers whatsoever. So I buy the stuff um, just like everybody else. Now, I'm lucky enough to be able to get cars at cost, but I still buy everything you see here is paid for. Um, all these cars on the wall, I fully paid for all of them. Um, but hopefully if I grow a little bit bigger, maybe I can get them because getting them in and making content quickly so I can release it is really important. So that is, as you're about to place an order, you can actually look at some of the content, building it, running it, all that kind of stuff. So, of course, if I'm buying it at the same time that you guys are buying it, there's there's no content. And then what happens, is, especially with the companies like Traxxas and stuff like that, now, tractors are insanely expensive, and I'd love to do more of that kind of car on the channel as well. But they're like £500 a car, and in the UK, we don't get them released until much later. So for me to get a car, pay like £500 for a car, and the time I've made content and put it out, there's 30 channels that have done loads of content on it. So I will never, you know, I'll make £10 from a video and I've just spent £500 on a car that the video is late. So I, I struggle with those kind of American um, manufacturers. Obviously, if the channel gets bigger and I can start making enough money that I can buy more expensive cars, then I will do it. But right now, it's impossible. Um, you know, if, if a video is making £400 and the car was £400, well, brilliant, but it doesn't work like that at the moment. A car is £250 and I make £10. So obviously, I don't, it doesn't financially make sense. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, back when I was a teenager and I'm still live out there. Uh, what else have we got? Gavin, you're looking at. Oh, okay. So you have to book to go to Tamiya headquarters. I thought you could just walk in the door, Matt. 
I uh, I thought it was just open and you could go in. I didn't know. But uh, I won't be going back there uh, anytime soon um, because, obviously, I don't work for the company anymore. And once you've done uh, 10, 11 visits to Japan, that's a long commute. <laughs> it's a long way to go. So, uh, But my wife's never been to Tokyo, so I'd like to take her there as well. What else have we got? Uh, so what other cars? What other cars? Cars that I'm after. Uh, I'd like to really get hold of a vintage cat short wheelbase. Now, I've seen one in a year turn up, but you can convert the um, you can convert the XLS to short wheelbase. But I actually want uh, an actual proper short wheelbase. Now, maybe Schumacher, uh, maybe they'll bring out a short wheelbase. I did have a look and try to think what Schumacher would bring out next because they haven't brought out any vintage cars in quite a while. So maybe as a guess, we might see a, what did I write down? A uh, Cougar or a Cat 2000 EC maybe but they don't seem to be diving too much into their vintage stuff they just brought out a stadium truck which looked pretty cool um and that's called the storm stadium truck storm st but um uh, i'd like to get that on the show but again it's like 300 307 pound i saw it today so uh yeah that's quite expensive i can buy a vintage car for that money which i think a lot of you guys were more interested in than a brand new stadium truck so hopefully we'll see a few more vintage cars from uh, Schumacher. Uh, what else have we got? Cars that are coming on the channel uh, that are in the build list. Now, the big one that I keep getting hassled about, which I should have done instead of doing the um, Nova Fox, which still doesn't have a driver, by the way, uh, is going to be the Top Cat, the Schumacher Top Cat. That's next um modification wise for it the only thing i've got is the brass front plate to try and keep the nose down I haven't, I haven't bought a gearbox or anything like that i'll build it first run it and then if it's very popular then maybe i'll put some mods on it and stuff like that so that's next i still got uh what else have i got where's my list of bits and pieces um where are we oh i've got a uh xvo1 that's still new in box. That's the Lancia Delta Integrale. Still got to build that. That keeps getting pushed down the list. Um, Terra Conqueror. I've still got a brand new vintage new in box Terra Conqueror. Now they're super hard to find, and I've been sitting on it for a while, and I need to build it. So that will come. Uh, the Top Cat. I've also got. <laughs> I've got another Fat Fox truck. That's that's my third one. After I sold the second one, I just I just wanted another one for myself. But I wanted to take that body and put that body on a TCO one. So uh, that may come later on down the channel. Um, and I've also got to make my TCO one body. Now, LNL models have got me a new replacement uh, Formula E body. But they've he, he uh, I spoke to Lee and uh, there's a new livery decal set. But I don't know if it's from him or if Tamu have put it out, which is the Mercedes Benz Formula E. I just saw it tonight. So I sent him a message asking, asking him if it's from Tamu or it's his his own thing. So uh, if I've got to build another TCO one body, oh, three days work, I'm going to do it in a different decal livery from one of the other cars. Um, so that's what's lined up. But what I'm getting in, I've got a uh, Vanquish VQS on order. Yeah. That price is putting a lot of you off, though, isn't it? Every, all I see is comments on insane money. It's insane money. Uh, and I have to agree with you. It's yeah, it's a bit steep. Um, I was kind of hoping that we'd get a special uh, motor in it, a bit like what you get in. Um, you get the, the special motors, the special edition motors in it. So I, I kind of thought, okay, well, maybe they'll put one of these motors in that, but it's not. It's got a silver can. So you're kind of thinking, well, why is it so expensive? I mean, it's supposed to be a budget Avanti. And obviously, I have my vintage one here. Ugh, aerials. I have my vintage one here. So the wheels are not cream like this. They're white. Um, 
and then obviously this has changed to VQS. But um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. They've changed the uprights. The uprights here, they're gold now, which is basically the same as these ones. So those uprights are on this car. But apart from that, so I, I think that's a big ask. And uh, I don't know whether it's a case of they're doing a short run of them, but I can't find out anything. I'm just guessing. But why it's at that price point, I honestly don't know. Um, apart from that, it looks exactly the same. Oh, the front upright, that looks like it's in metal because if you look how thick it is, in the actual uh, pictures that I've seen of it, it's very thin, which usually means that's been changed to a metal. But then as for the G parts on the back, which are really fragile, this part here is really, really fragile because this is all bolted to it. And uh, I put one of these on a countertop and this exploded just from putting it down. So I can't run this car. But if, if this part hasn't been modified, then I'm going to pick up about three or four of them. Um, but yeah, crazy money, crazy money. It's crazy money in, in Australia as well. I think everywhere. Yeah, it's even though I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to get one at cost, it's still, it's still a lot of money for a plastic, plastic uh, chassis. Um, also on order, I, the Ivanti, the 2011 Ivanti that I just had there, that's being reissued again. So I'm getting one of those in. The reason I'm getting one in is because I've never built an Ivanti. Uh, I've done a Vadra, but I've never built an Ivanti. Every Ivanti that I bought has been built already. Uh, so I wanted to experience a new inbox one. So that's why. Plus, I've got one of every Ivanti that ever came out, apart from the the aero i haven't got an aero uh can't find them anywhere and they're ugly as sin so i'm not a big fan of it but at some point i'll have to try and add one to the collection to have one of everything the the newest Ivanti that i've got is is this i don't like this car at all <laughs> and i've actually changed it these are not the right decals these are decals i put it on to try and make it look a bit more Ivanti like but uh yeah, the Vanti Mark II. I don't know what it, what Tamiya were thinking when they made this the Avanti Mark II. This is not an Avanti. This is a, I think it's a Dark Impact, is it? If I'm right, it's a Dark Impact chassis. Uh, I can't remember, but I drove <laughs> I drove this once, and the dog bone fell out the back because the uprights it's got like one little tiny bar, and then it just fell off. So, uh, yeah, not a big fan of this, even though it probably goes around the track faster than Ivanti. But to me, an Ivanti is more about sort of carbon and, and metal parts and, and engineering and being very unique and special. This ain't that. I don't know, rambling on, what else have you guys got to say? Uh the surgeon internet in the hobby. uh well yeah one silver lining to this massive black crowd uh, cloud is that rc is booming absolutely booming now that <laughs> it's like the perfect storm happened it was like everyone's now got time on their hands everyone's stuck at home everyone's bored and can't go out everybody that was into the hobby a long time ago but had no time and they've got children and stuff like that have now got a bit more time on their hands so everyone rushed out and bought the kits, which all the kits got snapped up. Prices were driven up. Then uh, the, the, the other side was that the manufacturers can't produce the kits fast enough anymore. So the imports coming in is slower. So the prices have gone up and up and up and up. And uh, if I was starting this channel six months ago, I couldn't, I couldn't have this. This has all got too expensive. And that's another problem for me is now I want to get cars on the channel really quickly and, and build them up and then uh, sell them on and things like that. And now they've got even more expensive. It's even harder for me to actually get new kits in and stuff like that. Um, and obviously I want to build the kit. So I, I, ideally the kits I'm after is a new inbox kit that I can build on the show and then paint up but because new inbox kits drive a premium, the cost of me buying one and then building it and then selling it afterwards, it could be hundreds of pounds different, even if I do a reasonable job on it. 
So, uh, yeah, that plays, uh, plays a big part as well. Well, so we've got... Oh, the... Uh... <laughs> OK, so someone's asked me about getting a Shogun, uh, a Marui Shogun. Um, definitely love to get one on the, the channel. There is a problem with rarer cars. Um, and the, the issue is this. It's a bit like the problem I've got with Koyosho Mids. Now, this is a very rare Toms. And I've, I've fully restored this car. And you guys have probably barely seen this on the channel. And the problem is that to restore this car took me 14 months to, to find these tires and the rims and then the body. And then it's just like that empty roll bar on the back is almost impossible to find. And the problem I have is for me to source all these parts, it takes a long time and I find one part at a time. So I can't do a video about just finding the, you know, finding the hubs or finding the front tires. So it's really difficult for me to make content on these cars because it takes so long to restore them. Um, and by the time I get to this point, the only kind of video I can do for you is a look, I finished it. So I, I, I struggle with cars that parts are super rare. And this is one of those cars. I mean, uh, it's lovely. I, I really like it. If I can get the cover off. Oh, you have to take this off too. I'll be with you in a sec. I just want to show you. So, you know, I, I've even sourced a vintage battery for it. Uh, and it came out lovely. But every single part, I had to find these posts, um, this shroud, uh and, and like this battery, just getting this battery and these plates took months. I think it took three months for these batteries to arrive and then the getting sourcing these uh, battery trays and stuff like that, and these wheels. So I have a real issue with cars that are not, you know, super rare. So obviously, if I was going to restore something like that, again, it's the problem of finding parts, almost impossible. So I, I like rare cars and it's nice to bring rare stuff to you and uh, build things that people don't build but it comes down to price and availability um and that's the problem that's why you haven't really seen any of the kuro shows yet because uh, i've been slowly replacing them you know all the bits and pieces like this has got brand new wheels on it brand new tires but it needs a new body but i'm missing a few bits and pieces i put a new chassis on it um new new arms like finding these arms is really difficult and there's different versions of the arms for different cars. So, uh, yeah, it's a real challenge to make content on super rare cars, unfortunately. Um, so there we go. Hello. Welcome to the studio. <laughs> That's my Alexa. Right, what else have we got? Uh, who is your favorite other RC channel host? Uh, I watch a few guys. Um, Glenn, obviously. Uh, Glenn, when I was deciding that I wanted to do this, um, I wanted to do my due diligence on it and... There was a few things that I wanted to find. Is is it possible to grow an RC channel big enough to actually do as a job? And uh, so that was one side of it. And then I started looking around and I found Glenn's channel. And I found a few others as well. And then there's been new ones that have come along uh, after I started. And uh, there was, um, oh, what's his name now? uh kevin talbot i owe kevin a big thank you i've never talked to him and he actually lives not far from me he uh i don't know if you know kevin talbot his channel probably do he's massive um he goes and jumps loads of cars on skate ramps and things that's just down the road for me um my daughter goes to ballet really close to where he does that so i know that place but i've never seen him or spoke to him or anything like that and he showed me that the channel you can make a big enough channel uh doing that as well as there's RC Sparks as well, who's even bigger. Um, so it was like that. And then there's Glenn with Tamiya, because obviously Tamiya was my sort of car when I was younger. So I was thinking, oh, I'd like to do predominantly Tamiya, but I do like lots of RC. So uh, that's where Glenn, I found Glenn's channel. And uh, I talk to Glenn quite often. Yeah, quite a few people. And then there's, uh, uh, there's a few other channels. There's... Um, uh, RC Action Australia, 
Uh, that's another channel. And another one that I watch. Uh, who else do I watch? We've got uh, RC Review. RC Retro is another one that I watch. Um, ooh, who else have I got? Jonathan Pye. <laughs> uh, Steve OD313. He's another guy. Um, so, yeah, I, I watch loads of RC stuff as well. Uh, let me get the chance. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca, hi. <laughs> oh, she turned up. Rebecca's here now. She just posted hi. <laughs> Hello from Germany. Hello, Stefan. Uh, what else have we got? I remember you were supposed to be putting period correct electronics in your Top Force Evo. Uh, yeah, I haven't done that much with the Top Force Evo uh, at the moment. Uh, the only thing I've got. I've got a battery, um, uh, a motor mount. It was missing a motor mount. Um, put new tires on it. So it's got the correct tires now that are brand new. Apart from that, um, I've still got a, uh, this is a um, uh, aftermarket body. This is from Team Blue Groove, but I've got a Tamiya one. That's why you can see there's no cutout. But I want to get original decals. But uh, yeah, good luck with that. What amazes me is why you cannot get perfect decals. I don't understand why you can't. I've got about three or four um, aftermarket decals and they're just not as good. So I, I, I really don't understand why we can't just have perfect decals. Now, I know there's this whole thing with Tamiya going after people making decals for them, which does annoy me about Tamiya, I must admit, because if Tamiya doesn't want to support its vintage cars by bringing out the sheets, then it should really let someone else do it for us. Because what? If, if uh, no one made the uh, decals for us, what are we going to do? We'd have just cars with no, no bodies on or just blank bodies. So I think Tamiya are missing a bit of a trick there. They should be producing all the decal sheets and they could even sell them for £20 a sheet, which for them is going to cost them five pence to make it. There's a massive margin on it. And there's a lot of people that are desperate for decals for all their cars. So we have to go somewhere else. But they don't seem to be interested in it. I guess it's just not big enough business for them, I suppose. Uh, so we've got... Uh, what have we got? Dad says hi to. <laughs> Hello, Dad. My father's watching. It's like the whole family's coming. <laughs> hey, Cosmo. Jeff. Oh, Corbin, my son's here. No wonder there's so many people in the comments. It's just my family. I'm talking to my family and no one else. <laughs> uh, bullhead. So, Paul, Paul Brown, I hope to have a bullhead being delivered soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to love that. It's it's big. So, ugh. these are amazing. Now, I wasn't a fan of this. Um, I've got it purely to bring it on the channel. And um, I was like, nah, it'll be OK. Brilliant. Absolutely loved it. Went a bit crazy and changed all the chassis and everything. Um, I got a bit carried away. But you guys loved this. This was really popular. Um, I've been chatting to the guy who makes these chassis. He's got a, like a pro racing chassis that I was tempted to put in one of these. But uh, this now drives beautifully. Absolutely amazing. And all the bits that I took off of it, I'm actually building a parts clod as well. So at some point, I'm going to put um, metal rims uh, and different tires, and then these will go on that clod as well. But this performs amazingly well because um, the steering out the box is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. If you put it on the table and you try and turn the steering, it won't turn because too much friction because there's one servo that sits in the middle. <laughs> it's just rubbish. But if you actually modify them and put one per axle, um, yeah. The, the only thing I've done since this was last on the show was I changed the server savers to these ones, which were crazy money. But, um, yeah, just to protect them a little bit. But uh, that's beautiful. Yeah, love that. Ugh. Hi from Norway. Super Dragon. Oh, all right, building a Super Dragon. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Super duper club bus this evening. OK. And uh, I never had a. Um, so you have a favorite TTO one. Do I have a favorite TTO one or TTO two model? 
Um, I'm kind of TTO2'd out, to be fair. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of seeing more and more bodies on TTO2s. I just wish they'd move on a bit now, personally. Um, I do have this TTO2B, which uh, I've had for a long, long time. This was my son's until I ruined it for him. Uh, I put brushless in this and I made it into an insanely fast, completely out of control car. And then I went and spent a fortune on bits and pieces for it. And it's now really heavy. So it goes, it goes at 50 mile an hour and is heavy and it's completely out of control. So, uh, yeah. So I ruined, <laughs> I totally ruined it for him. Um, and I, I, yeah, now I can't sell this because the, cost of what this is worth in parts uh so i'm kind of stuck with it now and it taught me a lesson <laughs> don't overdo it <laughs> but then i just showed you my clod right <laughs> so yeah this is this is uh insanely fast this will do backflips uh yeah or i can pirouette it up onto one wheel yeah i need to take this out and this is the uh, I downgraded it to this. I had an even faster motor in it, and it was just stupid. Um, it does look really cool, though I must admit. But uh, my son doesn't like driving it because it's just bonkers. So let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll sort it out later. I'm desperate to bring this on the channel. This I've had sitting for a while. I need to paint this up and fit electronics in it. Uh, managed to got a uh, get the correct motor for it. This is a brand new original, uh, original body, never been driven. Again, never really come on the channel. Uh, I need to paint this up soon. Absolutely beautiful. Hate the box art though. The box art colors are awful. It's like the, the dark blue and things like that. So I want to do this in a different color, but I'll look around and see what other people did. Or it'd be nice to get this professionally painted, being that it's an original body. But uh, yeah, so at some point that will come on the channel. <laughs> so Rebecca's saying, why have a drone but haven't had a chance to play with it yet? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So uh, a friend of mine that I used to work with gave me this drone to play with. And uh, the problem I've got is that I need two people to drive cars and one person to, to, to do the drone. So uh, it's quite difficult to arrange to have enough people around. To, but I have had a go of it. I actually have uh, flown it. It's actually quite easy to fly. It pretty much flies itself. You just tell it where you want it to go and it just sits in a hover. So I will do something with it. And I found out that my this camera is not brilliant, but my GoPro actually fits on it, but it won't stream. But the footage from this is what you see in all the videos. Why is there a fly in here? So, yes, there will be some drone footage at some point, but I want to do low level with like the car just over the uh, just over the top and stuff. But yes, I will do something. Yes, we need Kershaw to re re the mid. Yes, uh, KX500. But I don't, we were just talking a bit earlier on. I don't think we're going to see it for a while due to there's two other cars in the family to come first. Unfortunately, um, yeah, like I said, there's the uh, Kyosho Salute, which I wouldn't be interested in. Then the car I would be interested in, which is after that, which is the Pro, Optima Pro four wheel drive. Now, that's a car I would get on the show for sure. And then it's the mid. So we've got a bit of waiting to go, unfortunately. But I can highly recommend this. I absolutely love this. Don't have the correct motor in it at the moment. But I have got the brushed um, brushless motor on order. I don't know if you guys know. But um, the, the problem we're having with Kuroshio is they can't release the parts. So getting hold of uh, tires and a new body for this is really, really hard because they, they've come out just. I've seen them uh, in Hong Kong, but not over here. So if I run this too much, I can't get new tires for it. 
So that's a bit of a bit of a pain. And the motors that's supposed to be in that, the brushless motor, which is the uh, Limon 480T motor supposed to be in it. It's only just come out now. Now I've got two on order. Why, you might say. Well, Tamir and, um, sorry, uh, Koyosho have done this thing. It comes with an extra kit. So there's two motors they produced, which was the 480T and the 480S, which is blue and green. I've actually got the originals here. So what uh, Koyosho did, they brought out the green, which is the uh, 480T, which is the torque one, but they've added the parts to turn it into the uh, sport. So you don't buy two separate motors, you just buy one and it's got the bell housing, uh, the, the top and the bottom and uh, the decal, and you can change it into this. So that's why I've got two coming because I'm gonna have one of each. But again, the, the, for what they are, they're asking a lot of money for them. Um, but I've got two on order, but they should have come a month ago, but they've only just started to filter out now. But uh, luckily Lee at LNL Models managed to pick me up a couple. So he's gonna send them over. So once I get them, I'm actually going to do a video on the channel of me changing one from the T to the S. So you will see that because I haven't seen anyone do that yet. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Rebecca, follow him around with the drone and obviously upload the results. <laughs> uh, any. Oh, OK, so any cars you regret selling? Uh, I regret selling my Fat Fox. Because it took me it took me three days to make that body, um, and I really like that car truck. Well, it was on a uh, TTO one chassis, um, but the the body, not more than the chassis. Not that bothered about the chassis, but the body. Yes, that's why I bought another one. Because um, originally I was going to just buy a new body set for the Fat Fox to put on my TCO one, um, and then uh, I was thought, well, I could use the chassis for another build like the Mark II Escort that I'm going to do. And then I'll just keep the body kit and put that on the TCO one because it was cheaper to do that. So I'll probably will do that. Uh, uh, do I have any fun stories of getting into trouble with RC cars? Uh, only Rebecca, really. Uh, yeah, buying stuff and rolling eyes and stuff like that. But obviously, I've got the best excuse now is I do it as a job. Um, but I did <laughs> I did today go <laughs> go and get my eyes tested. And uh, the woman, uh, the optician, she asked me what I did for a living. So I said, I'm a content creator. So I am so trendy. Yeah. <laughs> but she didn't just look at me strangely. She just didn't bat an eyelid. But Rebecca sat in the corner rolling her eyes like she usually does. But uh, yeah, there you go. So um, not getting in trouble as such. No, I, I mean, I don't, electric cars are quiet. So it, it, it doesn't really upset people if you've got um, electric cars. Whereas if you've got nitro cars, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you can upset just about everyone with a nitro car. Um, not that bothered about nitro cars personally. Um, it's just, I mean, I've got uh, petrol mowers and I've got petrol trimmers and, and they just drive me up the wall. Um, having to fill it with them and then the fuel stinks and stuff like that. And electric is just so easy and it just works and it's great. So I don't really go down that route. Uh, favorite RC? Oh, depends. That's a hard one. Depends if you're talking about looks, drivability, the whole package. Um, I would have to say my 959, Porsche 959. That's pretty epic. Um, and it's a real shame that there's a lot of people that can't have that car because of the prices and the rarity. And, and But then you can't drive it. So that would be a problem if that was my only car because you'd just stare at it. So you might as well get a model. Um, this is probably the best Riri kit that's ever been made. Um, in my experience, in my opinion, this is how you should make uh vintage cars look at it it's absolutely stunning i mean obviously not the best if you're going to drive this but uh that quality wise oh this is probably i can highly recommend this kit to anyone it's uh absolutely stunning beautiful car drives really well i've actually put chain it's got a chain in it i don't know if you can see through the window 
Uh, but you get a choice of belt or chain, but I did it with the chain. Love that car. Absolutely adore it. Uh, what else have we got? I have a few Nitro Tamiers. Uh, uh, yeah, Nitro just doesn't really interest me. Uh, Kurosho Beetle. Love to. Can't find one anywhere. Absolutely can't. I mean, obviously, it's not that different. To the Tomahawk. Oh, this is this is an amazing car. And I'm not going to show you my soldering because you guys took the Mickey out of me and I was a bit stupid and sold it up. This car is brilliant. Lovely to drive. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. And it's beautiful. Another kit, but hard to find these. These are really difficult. Um, but if you're a Tamiya fan, you've got to try a Kurosho because you can like many manufacturers. You don't have to just have one. And I love the Kurosho stuff, but uh, can't find a Beetle. But basically, it's not that much different to this one. RC Days, hi. Hello from Portugal. Hello. Uh, Subaru Brat. Yes. At some point, I will have a Subaru Brat on the channel, I promise, as well as a uh, wild one. Yeah. At some point, I will add a wild one as well. I did get asked about that quite a lot, the wild ones, and they are really good. Yeah, yeah. Definitely like to build one of the channels and a Brat too. I mean, um, off-road chassis. I've got a few off-road chassis. Obviously, I've got my frog down here um but yes i would love the, the the body is gorgeous uh love the tomahawk yes I'm a big fan myself uh yeah the frog i can highly recommend the frog um the frog surprised me on how good it drives it considering how old it is it is brilliant to drive really nice real good fun and uh very reliable um if you've got a bit of money you can put a uh, bull diff in it as well uh, which is cool, and then you can run a bit more power. Looking for a Tomahawk body shell? Yeah, not the easiest thing to find bits and pieces. Kurosho is, yeah, this is, this can be a struggle to find parts for reuse. Even the cars are disappearing, though. Have you ever thought about doing a vintage mud blaster? Um, at some point, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the cars, some of them just sort of fall in my lap. So uh, I kind of look at what's coming in and stuff. But uh, I found it, it's better for me to actually get what's coming out so that it's more um, topical. Like when I when I did the Phantom and I did the TC01, you guys really like that stuff because it's you're thinking about buying it and things. So uh, from, from that side, types of pan cars. Uh, yeah. If, if there's any more pan cars that come out, that's... Uh, I would be interested in them. They are really nice uh, and they're lovely to drive. These things, if you've never tried one of these, I can highly recommend them. They are brilliant, really easy to build, uh, tiny, absolutely tiny. Um, very pretty, very retro. Lovely. This is obviously four wheel drive, it's a chain drive. Um, so, very easy to drive. The only downside is obviously no suspension. You need a nice flat place, a car park or something to drive them. And if you crash it, yeah, you'll destroy it. I've got a little bit of damage here, thanks to my son, who is sitting over there. I let him have a go, and he drove it into a curb, so it's got a bit of damage. But uh, I will get another body at some point, because I want to drive this more, but I need to make sure I've got a set of tyres, a new body, and this plate. I want to get those. If I can get those, then I will drive this car a lot, um, because I won't care what happens to the tyres and the body and this bottom tray. And then when I'm finished with it, I can restore it back and put it back on the shelf. So uh, I'm kind of waiting for those parts to arrive uh, in the UK. But I really enjoy driving this car. Yeah. First car was the Grasshopper. Me too. Me too. Fantastic little car. Yeah. Oh, it's just deep down the bottom. I can't get it. There's lots of different versions. Uh, obviously, June Watanabe, which one I did which I've been after for ages. Since you last saw it on the channel, I've put the windows in. See, it's got the, uh, the the mesh in the windows. I still have a driver to put in. I'm going to do a um, Nova Fox driver like that. 
which is a, uh, then the standard sort of driver. This is the actual driver for the car. Um, I cut all the windows out on this one and I made a roll cage for it. So the bars actually are bars. They're not just a bit of plastic. So it's stronger, but this car will never be driven. And I cut out all the dots. I cut each one out. And apparently someone did one of these and they painted each dot. Gosh, yeah. But uh, this is a love-hate car. But for me, I love that car. It took me months and months to get all the parts together. I didn't just buy that. I actually built it out of bits and pieces that I found. What do you think about Tamiya Fun or Japan culture models like, you know, for example, those bears and haze? Oh, OK. Those weird and wacky ones. Uh, don't know much about them. Yeah, there's a there's a tractor and, and a, yeah, don't know much about them. Not really that interested in it. Is the Tomahawk being discontinued? Uh, I honestly don't know, but they tend to disappear. Most Croatia stuff just sort of disappears into the ether. Um, I haven't seen anything official on it, to be to be fair. But if you want one, one thing I would always say with RC that after my experience is when they come out, grab one while you can. Because uh, the wild one is what's happened to me when uh, I was like, oh, I'll get one of those. And I went on eBay and there's loads of them for sale. And oh, I'll get one next month. I'll get one next month. And then you go to check later on. You're like, they've gone up a bit. Or, oh, there isn't that many. And then suddenly there's none. And then they're super expensive. People are putting them on for like 600 pound. And of course, you're not going to buy a wild one at 600 quid. Um and then you struggle to get one and then you look around all the sites and they're all sold out or, and then you're like, Oh, I should have bought one six months ago. So uh, yeah, grab them while you can, I think is your best bet. Uh, second, you join that June special. She will roll over. Yep. She will. <laughs> uh, Mini Z's not interested in them really, to be fair. I grabbed the tomahawk and the javelin before they went. So, yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to grab them while you can. Um, the, grab them at the beginning, or if you want to see if you can get a better deal, try and wait until they that the interest goes on them. But they can just disappear. So I tend to just grab it while you can. Um, oh, that's just the way that I work. Yeah, but I missed the wild one. I think. Um, or it's going to cost me a lot, or um, yeah, so be warned. Uh, can you get oil dampers for the grasshopper? Yeah, there's loads of Chinese ones you can get. I've actually got some of mine on the rears. They're not that good because they're so small, so don't expect that if you put oil shocks on a grasshopper, it suddenly changes massively. Um, one modification I would recommend, but it's not uh, cheap, is the uh, front suspension upgrade. Oh, I'll dig it out. Hold on. So this is my grasshopper. I did some modifications. That's uh, They're actually oil shocks on the back, and I've got an anti-roll bar on it to keep the back stiff. But the one I would recommend, that is a waste of time. It doesn't do anything. But this does. If you look, maybe you can see that. And it doesn't look that different it looks standard but if you can see it actually goes into the top you have to cut this out and that gives you much better front suspension travel that keeps the wheels straight that i can recommend that's from um shapeways and pro engineering but it's expensive but what i like about it is it doesn't actually change the car that much it looks pretty standard uh, you, you you wouldn't really notice that's really good. I really like that. Um, versus this is the standard. See? So the difference. Look at the camera change. Um, I've got a green uh, edition, one of these upstairs. Um, so I'll probably, I don't know, maybe I'll sell that. And then there's a black one, and then there's a proper, like, uh, high shine green one which is the Jap japanese one where these bodies are like 90 pound um so yeah but great car love it and it was my first car i put a slightly bigger motor in it um i've driven it a few times and it's great fun yep gossip
Oh, yeah. oh yes. Would I ever do a Tammy uh, Tammy semi B rig, J Jack D R? Yes, and I will do uh, some trucks. I will do a tank. I'm going to get a Tammy a tank. I want a Tiger too. Um, it's just when. Um, definitely, really, really want to do a truck, but they're expensive. You know, you can spend quite a lot of money on them. But uh, definitely interested in doing a tank first. I really want to do a tank, and then I'll do a couple of trucks, and then maybe um, I might build a better drone and uh, a couple of airplanes, maybe. Not that I can fly an airplane or a helicopter, but uh, at some point I'll mess around with those. I love all RCs from all manufacturers, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Mark Ampro, such a ripoff. Yes, Re pretty decent quality prints, but the costs, oh, they're insanely expensive. Yes, they. when you add in the shipping and all that kind of stuff, it, it, it normally prices it out of realistic. Um, you, and then uh, I don't know what kind of resale value you get. Like if I sold my grasshopper with that modification, would I ever get anything more for it than I would a normal grasshopper? So, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's a hard one to justify. Um, whether there'll be someone else in the UK, maybe that will do that. I am tempted to get a 3D printer myself at some point, but the problem is the studio is only this big, so uh, I don't have much space for 3D printers. And I've already got a bedroom full of stuff, and the wife is pleased that I have that. So at some point, I will get some 3D printers because I want to start making some mod parts for fun and things like that. And I think you guys would probably like to see that. Uh, eBay sellers who buy to make it for sell them spares. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's from Cosmo. What do you think about those eBay sellers who buy full Tamiya kits and then sell them as spares? Yeah. Stripping kits can be profitable. Yeah. There's, there's two sides to it. There's the good side and the bad side. The good side is if you break one thing, you can just buy that part. Uh, especially when it's out of you can't buy that part from anywhere else. Um, downside, obviously, it's a kit that's then disappeared into parts and someone who wanted a kit couldn't get a kit. So there's that. Yeah, yeah it, there's pros and cons to it. Um, for me, from my side of it, uh, when the um, VQS Vanquish comes out, uh, the front bumper, believe it or not, is exactly the same as the Avanti 2001, and it's a bumper that's never been reread. So uh, I want to buy two new bumpers. I need a bumper for my vintage uh, Vanquish, and I need a brand new bumper for my 2001. So where am I going to get these bumpers from? They're going to be from strip kits. So, you know, it, it is what it is. What annoys me is when people buy kits and then put them on eBay for like £700. Um, there was a Fox today. There was a sec uh, Fox that had been restored that had an original body with original decals and it was restored really well. And it sold for £177 today. And there's some, and I missed it and I was going to buy it and I had a technical problem. I bid on it and then it crashed. So I didn't get it. And I bid more than what it sold for. And then there's another one on there, which is not quite as good. And it's up for 400 and something pound. So the market is saying that a fox is worth around 170 to 190 pound. And it's up for 400 pound. And it wasn't as good as the one that sold. So people are getting a bit crazy with their 500, 600 pound mark, which is crazy. And then sometimes you send messages and you say, hey, uh, look at these that all sold. I think you're, you know, you're not a little bit off. You're like double the price. Um, and, and I had that with, I was going to buy a chassis. There was a brand new chassis for a King Cab. And I missed one that sold. And then there's another one on there that was like double the price. So I contacted them saying, hey, this is what they sold for. I'll give you a bit more. And they're like, no, no, we think it's worth that. And then it sits on there for months and months and months. So there we go. I uh, recently built a vintage Schumacher Cougar. Cool. Nothing like bringing back all the Schumachers. All the you know, restoring vintage cars is great. You know, it brings them, people getting them out of the loft and then putting them back together again. You know, it's, it's great. Got, uh, 
Is that right, Trump? <laughs> uh, 3D prints for me. Yes, 3D printing. Yeah. So you could argue the cost of what they're selling them is their markup's a little bit high. Hey, I guess it's, you know, they, they price it at what they price it at. People buy it. They don't buy it. If they don't buy it, they have to put the prices down. So, yeah, general business. Uh, buying the second kit for backup parts. Yes, that is a, a fair comment. And uh, it's, it's expensive. Ideally, I would love to buy three of every kit. Rebecca's just staring at me over there saying, you no. Know. <laughs> Why would I buy three kits? One. To, to build on the show and drive and really enjoy it without worrying about it. And then it, eventually it will get beaten up. A second one to build and have as a shelf queen. And a third one to put away for uh, down the line or, or that kind of thing. But buying three of everything, I have enough trouble buying one of everything. <laughs> three. Uh, yeah, maybe when I've got my uh, YouTube Lamborghini outside, then, then maybe at a one-to-one -one scale, not a, you know, a small one. Uh, yeah, but uh, unfortunately, I do not have the funds available to collect uh, for a rainy day and for parts and stuff like that. Uh, when do we uh, usually find out? Um, the, when we found out about the um, cars, there's a show in Germany, if I remember rightly, was the last one, which was in February, I think it was, that they normally make an announcement then at that show. Now, obviously, this year, you know, with what's going on at the moment, because that was in February, so it's before the whole COVID thing. So I'm guessing that show is not going to happen. So whether they will make an announcement that they're bringing out, like, the next cars in February, like they were going to do at the show, probably Japanese companies usually like to stick to the same sort of thing. So they may announce it anyway. In February, we might find out what's coming for that year. Um, did you ever build the Super Astute? Yes, I have a Super Astute. There we go. Yep. It's bulk standard. Uh, it's fully working. Oh, no, it's not. It hasn't got a motor in it at the moment. For some reason, I don't have a motor in it. Yes, there's a video on this. You can find the video um, in the uh, RC Kicks library. Also, I have a Astute. But if some of you will look, the gearbox is a TTC one. So this has been upgraded. And it's got a Technigo motor in it. And it's got high caps on it. And it's in lovely condition. And it has tires on the front that actually are spiky. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, don't ask what this is worth. Uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit into that one. This gearbox alone and that motor and these tires. I actually, this car's lovely. This is uh, my second Astute. I sold my other one. This one's in lovely condition. Um, so to have the two, yep. Really nice. Love these cars. So there we go. Ugh. Some of you guys might have seen on the channel, this is what Rebecca restored. It's been, uh, it's got high caps on it in lovely condition. Original body, original decals. The only thing I'd like to do to this car now is change the gearbox out, but I can't get hold of any more uh, TTC gearboxes. But uh, yeah, that was lovely. How are we doing? Am I boring the life out of you? How long have we been talking for? What's that, an hour? There we go. We'll check that out. Awesome. Fiction is awesome. Racing vintage cars is my new favorite. Yeah, I, I want to go to some tracks. Um, there is one that's not that far from me. So I thought it'd be quite cool to take some vintage cars and do a little bit of racing. But I don't know if they do vintage racing down there. But obviously with what's going on at the moment, I think it's probably shut down. Yeah, silver can, some cars suit silver can motors. You don't have to go bonkers fast. Sometimes if you put too much power in a car, you just ruin it. You ruin the whole experience because it's out of control and you lose the character, especially if it's like a two-wheel drive car. <laughs> I 
what is the best TTO2 for rallying? Uh, I have no idea. No idea. You can do modifications to a TTO2 to make it uh, better for rallying. Um, the best channel for that is, where is he? Uh, go check out um, Mark uh, Brian RC. He's done a few modifications to uh, TTO2s to make them better for rallying. He's got some cool stuff about rallying. I don't do many rally cars at the moment. That's not because I don't like them. I just, for some reason, seem to be more stuck into the buggies. Um, but I will do some more rally cars. I think it's the decals that scare me too much. The idea of doing <laughs> the decals on rally cars. Oh, my God. I got a regular Optima. Why don't I have a, a Javelin or a regular Optima? Um, a Javelin I'd like. Why I haven't got one? That one hasn't kind of come on the radar for me at a reasonable price. Would like one. Um, but uh, maybe. I do. I've... I must admit, I wasn't too keen on the look, but they've grown on me a little bit now. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to add one. Do, do, do. You have such a great collection of vintage artists. I really enjoy watching channel. Thanks, Biff. The best one for the rally. Our oh, chassis. Yeah, there you go. No stadium trucks. Yeah, well, I had. Uh, I've got this. Uh, I rebuilt this on the channel. There's, uh, there's a few videos on this. This is a mint fully restored Dyna Blaster. This is a car a lot of people don't know much about. Amazing truck. This, believe it or not, is the sister car to this. Same chassis design. And they look very different. But at, um, this has been fully restored and it's been upgraded as well. It's got a pink motor in it, which uh, also it's got high caps on it. I don't know if you can see. And it's got high caps. I put a brand new chassis on this one and restored it as well as a whole new body that I painted up. One of my most favorite trucks. Uh, so, yeah, that's the only one I have at the moment. I had another stadium blitzer, which a lot of people think that this is the same car as that. Completely different. This is a proper racing truck. This has got real pedigree and is a really, really fast car truck. Um, I sold it. I sold that. It wasn't special enough after I had that, having two stadium trucks. So I sold that one on. Uh, could you do a video showing how to safely clean an RC car? Uh, that's been out in winter and mud. The... <laughs> They, uh, the car that gets the most, there's two trucks that I've got that get the most amount of abuse. That is my TRX4 sort of camera truck, basher truck. That goes to the seaside, goes on beaches, goes in streams and everything. Um, and then you've got my CCO2 Mercedes Benz. That gets, uh, gets a lot of abuse. Um, as for cleaning them, uh, usually once a year, you've got to take all the electronics out, strip them down, grease everything up and build it back up again. And then after that, I tend to, because I make them fully waterproof, I just get the hose out when I get back and I just jet them down with fresh water. Um, the, the Traxxas TRX4, <laughs> I took it to the beach when I first had it. And uh, the next day, all the screws rusted. So I went online and I bought the stainless steel screw upgrade kit for the TRX4. And then that week I changed every screw on the whole truck. Not that expensive to do, but oh my God, it takes hours. <laughs> it takes, so now my TRX4 is full stainless steel screw set. And apart from that, it's, it's bomb proof. But about once a year, strip it down if you go hard. I mean, I put it in streams and sand and the, the sea and stuff like that. Uh, so really, once a year, strip them down, grease them up, fix anything, uh, change the electronics. I did do, there is a trail video uh, in, in the RC Kicks of me doing my um, CCO2 where I pushed it really hard and basically fried all the electrics, drove it through deep water. The uh, electronic speed controller was supposed to be waterproof, but it failed. Um, and then I cooked the motor because it lost the low range on it. Um, go check that video out if you want to see how to abuse a CCO2. I just ripped all the electronics out of it and then uh, cleaned all the chassis, put it back together again. It was great. So there you go. 
Uh, my first RC car was a Kurosho mid turbo. That you, wow, John, your first car was a Kurosho mid turbo. I was a grasshopper. How's that work? That's a serious car to start off with back in the day. The guy I used to go racing with, I had a grasshopper when I used to go racing. Yeah, you can imagine how far I got up in the uh, standings. Can't you? He had a short wheelbase cat. So my friend had a cat. I had a grasshopper. But uh, yeah, well done, you. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, race version of the stadium. Uh, I think the closest to a race version of the stadium bits would be the Futoba X. I don't know that one. Did you break your hobo? Uh, <laughs> did I break my Hobio hyper yet? No. I haven't broken it yet. The the spoiler's looking a little bit cracked, but uh, no, it's still in one piece. And it bang for buck, I can highly recommend them. You know, what, once you get into one eighth stuff, it gets really expensive, like insanely expensive. So uh, yeah, as a it's down here actually. Uh, I took it out not that long ago. I've cleaned it up a bit since then. Um, this spoiler, how this doesn't just get ripped off, it's got a few cracks in it. Highly recommend this. For, for the money, you want to get into this kind of uh, Hello. size trucks. Yeah, really good. The only thing you've got to upgrade on this is the rear uh, springs are too soft. Uh, so every time you put a bit of power down and the center diff needs to be uh, siliconed up uh, if you're going to run some serious power. The, the main problem that I have with those cars is that's really heavy and goes really, really fast. So it's like 40, 40 mile an hour, I think it was, and it's heavy. You can't drive that around with children. You hit a child at 40 mile an hour with something that weighs that much, you're going to hurt them. So I don't take it out when we go walking with the kids and stuff like that. I just take my CCO2. Uh, rock Shocker. Uh, I want to get a Tamiya Rock Shocker. I think that's the name. Yes, the Rock Shocker. Cool. Cool 4x4. Yeah, um, like monster truck kind of crawler. Uh, yeah, me too. Like the graphics on it and everything and the springs. Yeah, it's on my radar as well. Uh, I don't know how good it is as a crawler, but uh, it looked pretty cool. My first car was a Murray Ninja. Well, go you, David. Again, if, if you still got that car now. <laughs> uh, what's good? Yeah, it's supposed to be a waterproof ESC. Uh, first car was a Striker. Yep. Striker. The Marmite car. <laughs> this is my fully restored one. Uh, I love this one, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. You rather you you like them or you hate them, and a lot of people hate them. So I don't think this will ever get reread. Um, it's not the best quality car, and uh, it's 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 made of made of like glass. Um, if you hit anything, they just completely. And obviously, having a professional painter paint this, if I rolled it over once, it would damage this. So, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. This is purely a shelf queen. Um, the only thing I've done since this was on the channel is I've put a new motor in it. This is a Tamiya uh, lightly tuned. But uh, between you and me, the only reason I put this in is it's blue. Yes, that's how I roll. <laughs> Any plans to get a Shoemaker Pro Cat? Um... I don't know. Is the Pro Cat out? I don't think it's out, is it? John? I'm not sure. Uh, I'd like some more vintage cars from Schumacher, but um, I don't know about the Pro Cat. Uh, grasshopper? Yeah, zero. Um, first RC car was a Grasshopper. A lot of people, it was their gateway RC drug of choice. Yeah, the Grasshopper or the Hornet. Personally, out of those, um, I prefer the Frog from that kind of genre. The Frog, to me, is a better car. Um, but I don't know how much more expensive it was back in the day to get a Frog over a Hornet. Um, I think it was another level up, if I'm rightly. Uh, do I have a Kosher Ultima? I have a new inbox one. Yes. Lancia Rally. Uh was it uh, was it this one i mean not this specific one but was that <laughs> this uh this is in lovely condition um brand new pretty much but the body needs to be painted the decals need to be taken off 
but the actual car is in lovely condition. Um, as you can see from the dust, <laughs> something else to show you. Cool. This hasn't even been on the channel. Again, I've been restoring this slowly. Uh, look, it's it's got gold tires. Look, new. Well, they're a little bit dirty, but new tires. These are impossible to get. But uh, also, uh, it's got all the original electronics in it now. But I've now fitted a TC TTC gearbox to it last week, which is another little bit of bling and a pretty decent motor to go with it. So, uh, yeah, it's coming along nicely. But I just need to paint the body. But I'll probably get a new one of these. This one's a bit banged up um, before I go spending ages painting this up. But the car is fully restored. And it's pretty much all new underneath. But again, it's taken me so long to restore this truck. I haven't really done it on the channel because the parts term the tires took me a year to find these tires. The rims weren't too bad. But again, so hopefully this will be reread because this is a, a truck that everybody loves this truck. But most people can't get them because they're all beaten up or because they're so nice to drive that they're all beaten up. So if you want a nice one, they're, they're insane money now. Oh, <laughs> Tony, how are my RC10s coming along? Yeah, uh, about them. Uh, where are they? Uh, uh. They're pretty much exactly like they were when you last saw them. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I've done is this is an A-stamp uh, RC10 gold pan that's been used lightly. Uh, the only thing I've done is I bought a body and uh, I put new tires on it. So I've got one aftermarket body and these are obviously new tires. But apart from that, I haven't done anything to these yet. I'm going to paint them both up exactly the same because I've got a A-stamp gold pan and I've got a re, re brand new one that's never been driven. Um, they will be on the channel at some point. I just, uh, this one's got all the original electronics in it and everything. So I really love these. They're really nice. And I need to get the bodies painted. I've got all the decals and the wing and everything. I just need to do them. Um, but uh, soon. But uh, yeah. So that's all that's happened with the RC10s. Uh, always want an RC10. Never got one. Again, prices are insane. They've just gone crazy. The um, the RC10 that I really want is the world's car, but now the prices have just gone bonkers on them. I, ca I can't justify one, even though I'd really like one. But I have one of these. I don't even know if this has been on the show. This is a RC10 special, which is the graphite which is one of the rarest uh, RC10s you can get. And I was lucky enough to pick this up for a reasonable-ish price. And it come with a decent motor as well. Um, yeah, really, really pleased with that. I will do a new body. But my plan with this one is I want to do the same body again, but just a little bit more better quality. It's a bit rough around the windows. And this line is a little bit rough. Um, but I like the, the style. So uh, I'd like to replace this body at some point. Um, yeah, really, play, really pleased with that. And I think I bought this just before everything went bonkers with the prices. So uh, the only one I'm missing is the world car. But again, they just charge insane money. So there we go. Do we have a Maruri? No, I don't have one. No. See a Tamiya. No, no, hi, Gary, and I've got eight new box kits in the loft. Wife doesn't know. <laughs> hi, Gary, and I've got eight new box kits in the loft. Wife doesn't know. <laughs> Zero time to build them. Love the channel, mate. <laughs> this is a good comment. Laser ZX. No, I don't have one. 
Oh, right. The comparison of the CCO1 and the CCO2. Um, yeah, I, I could probably do a video on that. There was one um, done already, really good one. I'm trying to think of the channel now. Uh, is it Matias RC? I forget, movie thing. I forget his name. Let me have a look, see if I can find it for you. He is excellent. Uh, he does really good stuff. I forget his name. He's got a CCO1 and a CCO2. Is it begins with M? I can't remember. Uh, I can't find him. Uh, he's really, really good. You guys probably know. He's got big, big RC channel. Does amazing footage of uh, of his cars. He did he did one on a CCO one and CCO two, and they are very different. Um, if you want to do, um, if you want to do basic uh trail driving on like a gravel pathway cco1 no problem if you want to do anything more than that cco2 definitely but then uh i i'm a big fan of the cco1 body the the land rover defender body which is the one that i built i really like that but you can buy the body and get it to fit on the cco2 if you want to but they are very different um so yeah. Uh, one thing I would say about the CCO2 chassis, I didn't, when I bought it, I didn't expect much from it. And it's outperformed what I think it can actually, you know, what I thought it was going to be capable of and what it actually is capable of. Uh, I've put a few modifications to mine. Uh, I've got mine down here. I don't, oh, I don't know if I can get it. See, this is my one. This gets a lot of abuse, as you can probably see. Um, a few modifications that I've done. I put brass, brass on the front, changed the tires, changed all the linkages. Uh, I just put a sound kit in it uh, yesterday for a bit of fun. Um, don't think it's going to stay in. It'll probably come out and go in something else. But um, this has now got the new um, brushed uh, electronic speed controller combo in it. And that is perfect for this truck. If you've got one of these, I can highly recommend that. It's silky smooth. Um, but this is brilliant. Really good. I can highly recommend it. But I didn't expect much when I bought it. I thought it would just be a pretty looking thing. But uh, I drive this more than my TRX4. Um, this, has done a, this has done quite a few miles. And I'm tempted to do a challenge to see how far I can drive this in 12 hours or something fun like that. But uh, I really like it. I will probably do some more modifications at some point. Um, yeah, highly recommend it. Uh, TTO 2B chassis underrated. Do I think, so this is Peter, do, do I think the TTO 2B chassis is underrated? I mean, you can do a lot with it. I mean, I, you can, I've seen people do speed runs with a TTO 2 chassis, <laughs> like, like 90 mile an hour speed runs. Uh, I think the problem with the TTO 2s now is they've just been around for so long and the TTO 2B is all right. Um, I think if you're going to use a TTO 2B uh, a lot, I would definitely change to the hard chassis, the blue one, because when you keep putting on and taking off the gearbox, uh, the, the, the pinion gear cover, you screw it to the chassis and they blow um so if you're working on it and tinkering with it a bit the the screws all thread out uh which is what's happened to my tto2 that i showed you earlier um so i actually got a hard body tto2b chassis down down in my parts bin waiting to go on when i strip it all down again um so yeah not too keen on that very easy to build um i've also you can get so many parts for the tto2b's you can get uh, oil diffs. You can get full metal. Um, that TTO2 that I showed you earlier is metal from the pinion to the wheels, the whole lot, um, which makes it more noisy and heavier. But power-wise, you can run more power than the chassis can handle through it. So you've got lots of options and stuff like that, and there's tons of bits and pieces. Um, can't say I'm overly a fan, to be fair. Uh, have I built a VX01? Have I ever? <laughs> I've got a VX01 uh, in its box, staring at me down there, and it's been there for six months. So I will, RC bro, I will be building one. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, yeah, there we go. So it's coming. I promise you it's coming. Uh, be great to see more rally kits. Yes, uh, there's. it's not that I don't like rally kits at all. For some reason, I seem to, just by looking at this, uh, more buggies. But that's like subconsciously. It, uh, the rally cars are really beautiful and I really like them. So there is no reason why I don't have them on the channel. For some reason, I just don't. But uh, at some point, yeah. I mean, I've kind of got all the buggies that I kind of want. So apart from getting new things that come in, um, yeah, getting in more crawlers, more rally cars for sure. Um, the only thing with rally cars that I don't like is the decals scare me because some of them are so complicated. And uh, I'm okay with decals, but uh, they can wear me down a little bit. <laughs> so I see some guys have got pure rally collections. They've got like 40 rally cars. And you're like, oh, my God, that must have taken you hours and hours and hours. So, uh, yeah, I take my hat off to the rally guys. But uh, some of the cars look amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to drunken build? Uh, I, I, I don't think it would be a good idea. <laughs> I make enough mistakes as it is when I build my cars. <laughs> I think I'll just end up breaking it or... Uh, Leaving stuff out. Uh, my cat behind me is A+. Uh, the cat, yeah, uh, love, hate that car. Building it is the worst car I've ever built. See, the best car I've ever been, uh, built and the worst car I've ever built. But I love this car. It's, it's an amazing car. Brakes on me every time I drive it. Uh, working on it is a complete pain. Nothing lines up properly. Uh, but it's a beautiful car. And put it on a racetrack yeah you don't get much better than that on a racetrack for a vintage buggy uh, if i was going to go vintage racing that's what i'd be driving uh, do, do, do you plan on getting the temi vqs yes i will be getting a vqs on the channel i've got one on order as soon as it unfortunately i won't get it early so i won't be able to get the content out um before the actual release date I, i'll probably be out a week or so later um, I also have the high caps on order for it. I've got two sets of high caps, uh, VQS high caps on order. One to go on the VQS and another one to go on my Super Astute. Yes, the price. Yeah, we kind of talked about this earlier on. Yeah, the price is... Uh, no one can seem to justify the price. Why? Why is it short run? I've no idea. Maybe it was that they, uh, when they were discussing whether to release it, they decided to take the risk. They have to sell a certain amount of units, so they priced it much higher. So the odds on they're going to get their money back, I don't know. Also, the VQS came out of nowhere. I don't think anyone ever predicted that they would produce the Vanquish, mainly because it breaks constantly. And uh, it's very pretty looking, but um, I wouldn't say it was the most successful car. But, it, you know, I'm great it came out, but uh, I had, wouldn't guess that that was going to happen. Uh, why the bank had lost it? Why it lost its name? Yeah, no idea. Unless it's to do with the Aston Martins and stuff like that, with the, the Vanquish and stuff, why they changed. Um, it's kind of named after the little tiny racing car, slot car thing um so whether that's from the same reason i honestly don't know um but then you would think if you brought out a rc car before a car manufacturer produced a car that you would still be allowed to call it that so i have no idea i'm guessing completely guessing why they changed the name i honestly don't know uh turbo Optima is a pleasure to build. yes if you built a turbo optima mwah, it's like putting a watch together that's how good it is it's just like the fox um yeah so i don't know how it, obviously you've got fox there's a lot of other um naming stuff like that but if you bring out something and it's called a name and then someone else brings out something and then calls it something else like the same name because you because you brought something to market first you have the right to it i think I mean, obviously, I'm, I have no idea, but I would assume that you can then carry on using it because you use that name first, especially if it's, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Fox is, I don't know. I honestly don't know. It, it, so Martin thinks the, the VQS is high priced because of the upgrade Ivanti part. Well, the only, uh, and it comes with bearings. Well, as a, what are they, gold-plated bearings? 
Um, the the only parts that it comes with that's upgraded that I can see is the uh, uprights are from the 2011. Apart from that, and it comes with a set of bearings. Well, if it came with a uh, more upmarket motor than the silver can, I could go, well, okay. But do you think, so this is Stephen, do you think they will ever release the original Tamiya Hilux? Uh, yeah, it would be cool. But uh, I honestly don't know. It's a difficult one. It really is. Uh, how much have I spent on my collection so far? I cannot tell you that, and I honestly don't know, and I don't want to know. It's as simple as that. But one thing I have to say is that I, I started my collection, I got back into RC probably, what, two years ago? Two years ago. So I got most of my collection before the prices rocketed. <clears throat> so I'm... I'm very lucky. Yes, it was all expensive, but I don't think I'll lose any money on any of the cars that I've bought. Uh, a lot of my lucky Vantis, I paid less than £200 for my Avantis. Now, you try getting an Avanti for, you know, it's like this this one here. <coughs> That's an original 88 Avanti. Um, these are going for crazy money, five, four, five hundred pounds now. So, of course, if I paid 200 for it... Um, so I, I am lucky. If I'd have actually started the channel a year later, I wouldn't be able to have half this collection. So I was really lucky about that. Uh, have I ever thought about scoring my builds on one to five? Uh, Quebec's doing the road test with two cars, same time. Yeah, I mean, the it's a difficult one. Yeah, I mean, I tend to... When I'm building them, I tend to talk about how there's different types to it. You've got the technical aspect of a car, but also you've got the build fun of the car, how it flowed. Uh, and, and I don't know, it's hard to put it into words, but when you build a car, if it kind of just ebbs and flows and it's nice and it's not boring and, and it's not fiddly and, and, and annoying, You've got that aspect. Like, for instance, when I put, I built this Nova Fox, this is the last car I built. This just flows. It's super easy. There's no fiddly parts. There's nothing to be annoyed about. Um, and you can put it together really quickly. Um, and then you've got a body that's really easy to work with as well. So there's, there's that side of it. Whereas, you know, you've got other cars that you fight with or the bodies are really complicated and then the gearboxes can be fiddly and then you get some kits where they don't go together quite as well. Um, it's also difficult. It's difficult because everyone's at different levels. So as well, you get someone who's got no painting experience, no engineering experience. Um, and then you've got someone who is, you know, works on their car and then wants to do this, well, it's really easy. So it's difficult to really give, you know, it's, each person's different. You know, like some people, you could give them a Hornet and they'd really struggle to build it and it'd be super complicated. And then uh, on other sides of it, you can give a TCO1 um, to someone and they'll be like, yeah, this is easy. So it, it's difficult. Uh, Two cars together again is is quite a difficult one. Um, I I do hope to have a track. I, I could desperately need a track that I can just walk out of the house and just drive cars on a track, so that I could do more sort of time trials with them, like running around a track doing like twenty five laps to see, you know, that side of yes, I would. But unfortunately, we're not at the stage where I could invest in a track and stuff like that. The the channel can't carry that yet. But at some point, I would love to have a track where I can go out and then I can just run on it all the time, especially if it was an indoor one. But these are all things that hopefully will come in time. Uh, so, Phillips, uh, love your output. What did you do professionally prior to the channel? I had a proper job. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I specialize in digital pathology. Uh, my whole career, I've been doing... Um, basically it and then medical it and then digital pathology is my was my core experience from when digital pathology came out i was right at the beginning of the uh, of that technology 
right up to it becoming mainstream NHS stuff today. Um, that's what I did until I uh, gave up and I decided to do this for a job. <laughs> so, yeah, I had a proper job. <laughs> Uh, so the uh, v VQS or the Riri Avanti, if I was going to buy one, it'd have to be the Avanti. Uh, it's obviously it's more expensive, but it's not that much more expensive. Um, I think everyone should have at least one Avanti. And if I was going to recommend an Avanti, I would get the one that's coming out now or a 2011, but the 2011 ones are too expensive now. Uh, so if you want an Avanti, when it comes out, grab it at that base price. Yes, it's still expensive, but they're only going to go up. And whether they'll re re it again, I can't see them banging it out yet again. Um, so grab one while you can, otherwise they're going to be crazy prices. The best Avanti, the one that I like, if I had to have all my Avantis and I had to throw all of them away apart from one, the one I would keep is the 2001 Avanti. Why? Because it's uh, the decals. I like the decals on it, and it's special. It's different to all the other ones. Um, it has different – it has white rims that you don't see on anything else. It has a different driver, has a different bumper, and it has a different body, whereas the others share. The 88 uses the 2011. They all share. So the rare one is the 2001. But the 2001 is not the most expensive one. What seems to be the most expensive Avanti is the 2011. Go figure. Makes no sense to me. <laughs> I don't remember the Royal Ripper. What do I think of 3D printed parts? Depends how it's what is printed. Some are awful. Uh, some they come out of all the lines and then they're brittle and they're rubbish. I bought 3D printed stuff from eBay and it's garbage. But then I've also bought stuff from like Shapeways and their quality is brilliant, uh, but crazy expensive. The problem is, is it depends on if you want to if you want to replace a part in, in a car, but you don't want it to people to you don't want it to look different, different texture or anything, then that can be an issue. Then you've got to rub them down and paint them. Um, what I like, the best parts that I like are the machined aluminium parts because they look almost identical to the parts you replaced, but they're actual aluminium. Um, I can probably show you this. This is a classic example of that. Now, this, the astute, has very weak parts here, these uprights. But the, the camera's not very high resolution, but those uprights are metal. But they look almost stock. So they are so much stronger. So, yeah, I like machined aluminium because you can't basically tell, but it's much stronger. <sighs> What's a good next project after a grasshopper? Uh, retro, iconic, four-wheel drive. Pleasure to build. Any ideas, Philip? Philip, so you want to do a you want to you've done a grasshopper and you want to do something retro. You want it to be four wheel drive and a pleasure to build. Uh, if you can get a hot shot, if you can get a new inbox hot shot, they are quite difficult to get now. Yeah, a hot shot would be uh, a good place to go. Or if you've got the budget, uh, this. If you've got the money, that, if you can find one now. But if, you, if you're looking for, like, Tamiya, uh, Hot Shot would be a great way to go. Uh, strict about their trademarks these days. Licenses are very expensive. Yeah, you're obviously getting into litigation is a way of wasting lots of money for lawyers. Uh, also, Japanese companies don't tend to like that, where American companies uh, like to lawyer up straight away and then let's, let's fight it out in court kind of thing. Whereas uh, Japanese companies, they don't like that. It's not their thing. Uh, Two-wheel drive for the best. Or the rest. Oh, two. <laughs> okay, Philip. Two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive for the rest of your life. For me, it'd have to be four-wheel drive. It's just easier. It's just easier. Uh, easier to drive. Um, uh, my skill level is <laughs> not that great. So uh, four-wheel drive. Plus, I like four-wheel drive cars. I like the way when you build them and, and stuff like that. Uh, 
but I like four wheel drive tra uh, chain. I've got chain in this and chain in that. I like chains. And you think they'd be really clatterly, uh, like make lots of noise and stuff. No, they're all right. But obviously they're not as efficient as built. <laughs> How much for the Porsche 959? <laughs> uh, it, if you were to give me what I put into that car, 800, 800, something like that. <laughs> uh, what is the most hideous build you had uh, I've done? That was a um, the one I did not, not that long ago, the Super Dragon thing, which is basically a Hornet with a horrible body on it. Yeah, didn't like that at all. Uh, will you get into more the vintage curve shows not reissue examples uh the problem with the curve shows is restoring them on the channel we, we covered this before parts were a nightmare so i can't for me to do videos on restoring a car i need the parts so for me to gather all the parts up to, to restore one car it, it'll take a year before i can even do it uh, and then i've got to keep a big bag of parts until i get enough parts to restore it which is why you don't really see my Kurosho mids on the channel very often, um, unless I'm just talking about the whole range, because they take so long to restore. Uh, all of these cars here, that one, that one, that one, and that one, they're all in the process of being restored slowly. Like if you look, a lot of them have got brand new wheels and tires on them, but this one is missing a body. And so, yeah, it's a real problem. Big wig. I have a big wig. Yes. Uh, I actually have built one on the channel. Uh, have I built one on the channel? No, no, I <laughs> no, I haven't built one on the channel yet. I've got a vintage one and I had a re re one, which I sold. Uh, I will restore it. So it will be on the channel. Yes, uh, I don't mean to restore. I mean, so which car buggy would you like to drive if you could have a one to one? I want a Defender. <laughs> I, uh, I really want an, an old Defender. We've got a dog and we have the children and they trash cars. And uh, normally my company car, my old company cars used to get trashed a lot. But uh, I really want a Defender, Mark One Defender. I love the idea of the ruggedness of it and things like that. But uh, Rebecca, not a fan, not a fan at all. So uh, we're not getting one of those. Also, they're appreciating in value. So to buy a car that's going up in value is always a good thing and quite rare. Um, that's why I, I really enjoyed building my CCO1 Land Rover Defender. But we have compromised and we are going to get a new Defender that's just come out. But the problem is it's only just come out and I can't buy brand new cars. Uh, so I've got to wait about two and a half years before them depreciate down to a reasonable level so that we can buy a Defender 2. So that's the plan. Uh, neighbors of other uh, the street say when you run across over. Um, nothing really. Uh, I drive my cars around a little bit outside and things like that. Um, sometimes I'll take them across the fields when we're doing trail driving. Uh, I bump into the odd parents with children. Kids love it. I, I took this uh, out walking with the family last week, and uh, yeah, the youngsters love it. Yeah, I really do. Uh, will you ever build a Tamiya Semi or channel with these? Uh... Yes, I will build some trucks, definitely, at some point. Uh... Yes, the Avanti is being re-released again. Uh, Reissued is more the way to, to, to say it. It's not been re, re uh, Yeah, it's the same kit. The 2011, well, where are you? Uh, that one up there. That's coming out again. Yeah. As far as I know, no changes. The only thing that will be interesting is on the motor, it says 2011. So it would be interesting to see whether Tamiya um, changed the sticker or just release it again. And it says 2011, even though it was a 2020 reissue. I used to race years and years ago when I was younger. Uh, I'm not very good at it. And uh, I didn't. I had a Falcon and a Grasshopper. So as you can imagine, these were brilliant cars to race. <laughs> Why do I like Japanese products? Um, could the cars that happen to be Japanese? Um, if if Tamiya belonged to and an, came from another country, it wouldn't make any difference, to be fair, um, from that point of view. 
I just liked them from when I was younger, being that they're from Japan. I mean, I'm pretty sure when I was younger, I didn't no idea they come from Japan. Um, Japan companies have really good things and really bad things. Uh, you know, they, they have things that are very frustrating for customers and fans. Japanese companies can be a bit uh, not very loyal. What do you say? Um, they, they do their they do business a certain way. And sometimes from the West side of it, they, they do make decisions that don't make any sense to us why they do it or why they don't do something that looks really obvious. And then you get a lot of people saying, why are we all screaming for this? Why don't we get it? And it doesn't make much sense. That's one of the things that can be a bit frustrating when you uh, are a fan of a Japanese company. Uh, um, a blizzard, uh, ever kosher blizzard hasn't really come on my radar to be fair. What about clones? Yeah, I mean, you can get a few clones. Um, some clones are basically direct ripoffs where you could actually take parts off and swap them over. Um, it depends on your budget. It depends on your budget. If you really love something and you, you just can't get the one because it's too expensive and there's a clone, it depends on the quality of the clone, really. Um you know, if it's garbage and all the gearboxes are garbage and stuff like that, then you just wasted your money. But if they are genuinely okay, yeah, it's better than, I suppose it's better to have that than to, to have not have it at all, which is a real problem. The prices are now getting to the point where it's a real shame that people can't get these cars now because they're just too expensive. So you will never be able to experience it. And that is a real shame that once you get to a point where the price is, push out people you know you know it's like oh i'd love that car but i can't afford it it's i can't justify it um then you know it is difficult and even for me with you know from my point of view some cars i'm just like i can't i can't justify that amount of money even though i'd really like it and uh yeah it's a real shame <laughs> so the rolex get more cars <laughs> the uh it was a it was a 40th birthday present so i don't think my family would be too impressed if i sold my sold my 40th birthday present <laughs> uh do you have a ta01 no i don't know i think you might have lived locally many moons ago i used to visit beatty's west ealing yeah beatty's west ealing go in go up the stairs and up uh, upstairs yes uh yeah i you know i wish i had photographs I've looked online to try and find even a shot of the West Ealing Beaties. Um, no, so it's all in my head. That's what I can remember. And the banisters were like blue or something. Uh, yeah. And they, at the top of the stairs, they had the TV playing the adverts for Tamiya. And then they had them all up on the wall behind the counter. Yeah. Yeah. Those were the days. I just wish there was photographs. But unfortunately, I can't find any photographs from West Ealing Beaties. Right. Well, I think I've banged on for nearly two hours. So I think we're going to call it a day because, uh, yeah, there we go. But thanks very much for coming. And if anyone's been here since the beginning, you deserve a medal. <laughs> but, yeah, that's like one hour, 54 minutes. So, uh, yeah, sorry if I bored the life out of all of you. But, uh, yeah, RC's a call and I could talk about him for hours. Why is the Tamiya official? We'll finish on this one, okay? Why is the Tamiya official website so shockingly awful? The reason that the Tamiya website is totally awful for a massive company is because it's a Japanese company. And Japanese websites are terrible. And that's how they have them. And it comes down to a mixture of they don't see value in it. Um, I would assume that Tamiya is probably predominantly engineer driven. So uh, there's a lot of mechanical engineers and things like that. And Internet stuff is not really uh, a, a Japanese strong point, um, mainly because it's run by a lot of more senior older people who don't understand the Internet and things like that. That's why I have to give Tamiya credit for starting to do content on YouTube um it's uh this is that's quite radical for a japanese company to start putting out their own content on youtube now this might sound like complete sense and obvious to most of the world that your website is your gateway to your whole business 
and doing media and videos and is you know makes complete sense to all of us but to a japanese company on a senior level who don't really get it that's that's the reason so uh, that's why anyway i think we'll call it there and uh, thanks very much i've waffled on for two hours i hope you guys like it put a note in the comments if you'd like to do this again at some point um yeah thanks very much i'll see you guys later two hours i'm gonna get a cup of tea see you guys later bye everyone <laughs>